the green light is on in heaven and God is saying don't stop I'm here to tell you that the green light is on in heaven and that means that we must not stop what we're doing it, it, there's a powerful uh, feeling in this room today I don't know how many of you know where you are but but this room is full right now it's full of power and potential and purpose how many of you can feel it this room is filled with world changers just glance around you might have a look behind you a little bit but this room is filled with world changers how many world changers we have here today this room is full of gurus and experts tycoons magnets moguls leaders of industry prolific authors masters in public speaking and motivation and inspiration what are going on like it's not you i'm talking to i'm here to tell you that that's this room right now is is filled with weapons of warfare that this room is filled with some dangerous people and i'm here to tell you that the devil is shaking in his boots right now i'm not i'm not trying to I'm not trying to hype you up. I'm trying to get you to see what I see. This room is, is w w whenever somebody else walked in this morning with every next person that walked in, the devil got a little bit more scared. One after the next, the devil got more and more and more scared as we packed into this room filled with purpose and potential. Somebody say, I am purposeful. Come on, somebody say, I am full. I am purposeful. Oh. Somebody say, I am fully loaded today. Armed and dangerous in the hands of God. A force to be reckoned with. I don't know if you know. If you believe me, just look at somebody and say, if you knew who was sitting beside you, if you knew who you were sitting beside, you would, you would lean over and take a selfie with me. And post it all over the internet. Hashtag world changers. Come on, hashtag too hot to handle. Hashtag them can't hold away. Hashtag nothing can't stop with. Hashtag fully loaded in this place. I just want you to know where you are today. The devil is shaking. Because we are here together. Nothing can stop us. I just want you to know that there's nothing that can stop us. There is nothing that can stop us from fulfilling our purpose. Accepting ourself uh, nothing can stop you except you mercy let me tell you a story it's a true story the story is in the bible and uh it's a story about jesus and he's walking with his disciples and he's preaching and he's ministering and then they bring him this young lady the the, the priest and the, the the sadducees and these legal guys uh they brought this woman to jesus and they say jesus uh, you're a great rabbi, you're a great teacher, you're a great spiritual leader. This woman was just caught in the act of adultery, right? Now, we don't know if she was married or not, but the man she was with was not her man, right? Uh, so, she was caught in the act of adultery. Um, I, I know some of you are wondering, where was the man? <laughs> but, but we'll figure that out later. What we know for sure is that they brought this woman to Jesus and they said, well, according to the law, according to the law, we have to stone her. And they started to pick up these stones and they were going to stone her. And they said, what must we do? They really were testing Jesus. Because if, she, if he wasn't there, she would have dead. She would have dead. Then I'm done. But they said, well, let's bring her to Jesus and see what he says. And they came to Jesus and Jesus looked at her and he looked at them. He said some really brilliant stuff. They dropped their stones and they ran off and he looked at her and he said, now, who condemns you? Who left to condemn you? And she looked up and she must have said something like, well, it's only you one day, I know, you know, Jesus. What, what? I mean, it's only you one left. So what do you, what do you say? And Jesus looked at her and he said, I don't condemn you. 
I, I know you did it. I know you're guilty, but I'm not condemning you. So he says, I forgive you. What I need you to do is get up. Check this out. He says, get up and go. Right? Get up and go. Go, go and be about the father's business. Go and do something productive. He says, get up and go and sin no more. Get up and go. And in other words, he gave her a brand new lease on life. Can you imagine? You're, you're, you're almost dead. Just think about all the prayers you would have prayed. Right? You just sin. Right? Some of you know exactly what I'm talking about. Because some of you just sin. Right? So imagine you just sin. You get catch. And they're carrying you to be stoned and to be murdered. And while they're carrying you, you can imagine all of the things you would have said. You would have said stuff like, Boy, God, if you get me out of this one, <laughs> right? I will never. <laughs> Please, just, just one last chance and all of that kind of stuff. I, I promise, and if you ever get me, I promise, I swear to God, and all kind of things you would have done, right? Uh, thinking about the death that is coming, right? Uh, but Jesus released her of all of that. Isn't that wonderful? And Jesus said, now, get up and go and fulfill purpose. You have a new lease on life. Go and make what I just did worth it. Go and fulfill purpose. Be all of who you can be. Do all of what God has called you to be. Go and change the world. You are a weapon. Go and be dangerous in the arms of God. You know, go and fulfill purpose. I want to just say quickly that the reason he forgave her was so that she could go. And be purposeful. God forgives us not just so we can have relationship with him. But God forgives us so that we can go and fulfill purpose. God for forgives us for purpose. Uh, if, if it was not so, then he would have said, you know what? I forgive you, young lady. Now everybody just stone her and send her to heaven. I mean, I'm just saying that was a law. That's what him should I do, right? F I forgive her. I save her from this earth so she can go to heaven. Okay. Let, let me just say something. Jesus didn't save her from death so that she could go to heaven. Jesus saved her from death so that she can live purposefully on this earth. Just in case someone are wondering why him take you out of all of what him did take you out of. Just in case you're wondering why you're here today. God saved you. God forgave you so that you can fulfill what he has called you to fulfill. So he says to her, go <laughs> and sin no more. He says, you have such a purpose to fulfill. I'm forgiving you so that you can do all of what I have called you to do. He says, you are so powerful. No, go and be powerful. You're so purposeful. Be purposeful. And he says, there is no weapon formed against you that what? That can prosper against you. But I believe Jesus said to her, listen, let me explain this thing. There is no weapon formed against you that can prosper, prosper, but there is one weapon that has been formed that can crush you. And that's you. There's one weapon formed that's not against you unless you turn it against itself. And that's you. So he says, go and sin no more. He says, go and fulfill purpose. But you have to remember not to sin no more. <laughs> I don't know. How long do you think it would have taken before she forget? Uh, that in going that she mustn't sin. I don't know. How long? For some of us, it, it don't take long. Anyway. My issue, you know, I'm a pastor, and I've discovered that, that some people, when they begin going after God, when they start moving forward, they forget to not sin. And they don't realize that going, uh, going for God means that you have to stop sinning. You can't go for God and sin. Somebody say, go and sin no more. Basically, he's saying... I've given you the green light. Don't let sin stop you. Uh, 
Don't listen for our outline today, just some nuggets. Somebody say nuggets. All right, number one. The biggest lie ever believed. How many of you know the biggest lie ever believed? Uh, the biggest lie that has ever been told is this. That death is only physical. Let, let me tell you the story, how it went. And how, how, how the devil lied to us and how we've been believing it. Genesis chapter 2 verse 16. And the Lord commanded Adam. He said, when Eve comes, remember to tell her that you guys may eat freely of every tree of the garden, but one must not eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, for in the day that you eat of it, you're going to die. Um, when will you die? Th that same day. So um, after you sin, moments after, death is going to come. What day? What time? When? Right after. Same day, just moments after. Right? He says, no, the good news is you have a whole bunch of trees. The, the, the thing, though, that your part, you have to play is that you, have to, you can't sin. Go eat from all these trees, just don't stop to sin. Right? Uh, because in that day, just moments after you sin, death is going to come. It will surely come. Somebody says, surely. Right? So here's what happened, though. Now, this is really powerful. Listen to this. So Satan is there, and he lies to her, and he says, he asks her a question, he says, did God really say... He's asking Eve, did God really say that if you eat from this tree, if you sin, you're going to die? And she said, uh, yeah, that's what he told Adam, and Adam told me, and so forth. And, and uh, Satan said, well, I sin, and I'm still alive. Is that a serious thing? Just, just, just listen to this, right? I sin, and I'm still here. So... I don't know if you should believe what God is saying. I mean, uh, I sinned. I mean, I was up in heaven. He told, him this, told her this. I was in heaven and I get bad mind and I, and I get thrown out of heaven and all that kind of stuff. I, I sinned, the worst kind of sin, and I'm still alive. And she must have said, you know, you're right. And Eve ate and then she um, encouraged Adam and Adam ate. Right? I'm here to tell you. Something that they realized immediately after. They realized within that same day, <laughs> just moments after, that just because you are not physically dead doesn't mean that you're not dying. It don't mean that you're not dying. As a matter of fact, you will die spiritually, emotionally, mentally and purposefully long before you die physically. Death will come spiritually or mentally, emotionally, uh, purposefully long before you die physically. So our issue is, because there's mostly big people in here today, right? Our issue is that when we were growing up as children, when we gave trouble and we got caught, we got licks that same day. How many of you used to get licks that same day? And it was just moments, right? So you get caught and it was something like uh, Mr. Christopher Morgan, you know, they start calling by last name. Mr. Morgan meet the principal in his office. And the whole way to the principal's office, he said, I'm surely going to get it. Right? It was quick. Punishment was quick when we were growing up. Right? And you give trouble, you get caught, and your mother says, you see, when your father reach home, <laughs> peel your skin. And all of the moments before, mommy and, uh, before daddy reach home, you, you're crying, and you, you're tell, telling God something like, I won't do it again. But, but it, was, it was quick, right? You get in trouble, and then you get licks. But, but the issue is that as we grow up, we become big people, we discover that we can actually do things that nobody can beat with. Right? And the look your mother used to give you when you were growing up, like, that don't work anymore. It's like, it's like why are you looking at me like that? That doesn't work anymore, mommy. Right? You can't beat me. You can't do it. Uh, as you grow up, you realize that you can do a whole lot of stuff and not get, ha have any physical punishment for it. Am I right? You can do all kinds of sin, and there's nobody dragging you off to kill you. So, we, we, we get an issue. We have an issue uh, where we think that after we do something wrong, that we get off 
from doing it. Somebody say, the, the biggest lie ever told. The biggest lie ever told is that if you don't dead physically, you get away with it. So what I'm saying is this. I'm saying that the wages of sin is still death. And sin still brings you death every time. You sin, death comes. You sin, you're calling death. You'd be so scared and surprised if, if God would just open your eyes for you to see what your sin is doing to you. If you could just, if you could just open your eyes and see spiritually uh, all of what, all of the trail of death that's following you when you sin. You'd be a little bit scared. Because you say, well, I'm a big person. Nobody can't beat me. But death is right there attaching itself to your sin. The wages of sin is still death. So what we have is a lot of people that are walking around, a lot of people that are sinning, but they are still alive, physically. And there's a whole lot going on that's unseen that we don't see. And, and, and it's, a, it's a big lie because we believe we get away with things. So I just want to give you very quickly uh, a few things that sin does to us, uh, how death comes, stuff we can't see. All right, very quickly. Uh, right? You're not going to feel these physically, but they're coming. The first one is faithlessness. You lose faith. Someone say you lose faith. You lose faith. Right? Uh, the, the, the first thing that gets attacked when you sin is you lose faith. Uh, all of a sudden you stop believing. You, you can't believe, put it for, for instance, you, there are a lot of people who are having, some, having trouble believing God for physical healing in their body. They're not praying for physical healing because of the stuff that they've been doing with their body. It's kind of hard, right? To say God heal this body when you know what you was doing with it. So we lose faith. It's, I mean, it's, it's crazy because we, the just, actually live by faith. And when you sin, it's like you stop living by that higher power. That, that power. Okay, next. Uh, you get a seared conscience. You get, your heart gets hardened. Uh, when you sin, you stop realizing, recognizing the difference between right and wrong. It's just the way that it is. You know what right and wrong is, but after, if you sin, uh, after sinning a little while, you stop, you stop seeing right and wrong so clearly. And what happens when you stop seeing right and wrong so clearly, you can't even tell left from right after that. In other words, when your conscience is seared, you lose direction in life. You don't even know which way to go. I'm just saying, some of us feel faith uh, like we've lost faith. And some of us feel uh, like we don't have any direction in our life. And it's because of some stuff that we've done. Uh, sin, right, caused us to be out of place. Right, in other words, when you are sinning, in the time you were sinning, you, you, you should have been somewhere else, doing something else. <laughs> so we've left the place that we're supposed to be to go and do something we're not supposed to do. Right? I'm just saying, every time you sin, God had something else for you to do during that time that you're sinning. And the, the tricky thing about being where you're supposed to be is that God, is, is that God pours his favor out in the place that you're supposed to be. So when you're sinning, you over here, you're not where your favor is or your blessing is. I'm just saying, you're supposed to be over there, but you're over here. You feel unworthy. Right? You, 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 you don't receive what is good because you feel bad. You know, you, you understand that one. You don't think you're worthy of all of what God has for you. Right? Next, you're hiding. After people sin... Uh, we run and hide from God. God doesn't separate himself from us, but we surely do. Uh, and a lot of people run and they hide from God. Right? They hide from their destiny. Hide from their purpose. Hide from everything that God has for them. Mercy. Uh, <clears throat> the last one I'll mention, which to me is most pertinent today and for the rest of your life, is sin brings the death of purpose. When we sin, we abort purpose in our life. 
So God has power, uh, the potential power and purpose in you. And when you sin, you abort that. You kill it. That's the one you need to. So, so I'm not saying that salvation doesn't give you a get out of hell free card. Right? When you get saved, you get, you get a card that says, well, you're not going to hell. You get into heaven. Right? How many of you are glad about that? Uh, but just because you have a get out of hell free card doesn't mean that you have a get out of jail free card. In other words, what he is, the, the, the spiritual life that he's given you doesn't mean that you're not going to experience some hell on the inside before you get to heaven. I'm just saying, salvation doesn't guarantee that you're not going to pay for some stuff that you do down here. If you're going for God, you, you have to. You can't sin. Next. Take your finger off the trigger. Take your finger off of the trigger. What are you talking about, Pastor Chris? Well, uh, a long time ago, when I was living in foreign, so I have a Jamaican friend of mine, and he had a couple uh, firearms. And uh, just for fun and for hobby, uh, he used to say, Would, Chris, you want to go to the firing range? And you go on to, and you know, at first when he asked me, um, truthfully, the only reason I went is because I didn't want to look like I was a wuss, you know, I didn't want to look like an idiot. I didn't. You want to fire a gun, Chris, you want to shoot some gun, and, you know. I was like, um, okay, I have to say yes, because it was a manly thing to do. And at that point in time, I thought that, you know, that's what made you a man. So I went with him. And I go there and I put these guns down, guns down. You have to, all kinds of stuff. In America, it's really great, you know, to, uh, and you, you go through security and so on and so on. You go into this indoor firing range and, um, and he put on these guns on the table and he says, well, let me talk. And, and I just, I was going off and said, well, well, what if, what if it drop? What if it go off? What if it shoot me? And I'm asking him all these what if questions and he says, uh, you, you don't have to worry about that. He says, there are two things you have to learn. He says, first of all, no matter what, just don't point it at yourself. If you, if you don't want to get shot, just don't point it at yourself. I mean, it's, a, it's, a, it's there. You have to point it. And he says, and the second thing, he says, listen to this. Just never put your finger on the trigger unless you actually want to shoot. So don't point it at yourself. And then most importantly, never put your finger on the trigger. I said, oh, and I felt a whole lot better because uh, what, what he was trying to tell me is that the gun don't fire itself. A gun doesn't shoot itself. You have to have your finger on the trigger. I wonder if you understand that. Yeah. You know that much. It makes a whole lot of sense. Well, today, the Holy Spirit is saying that some of us in here are walking around with our fingers on the trigger. Or, sorry, just one finger on the trigger. Some of us walking around with well, What are you talking about? Here's what I'm saying. You see, you hate sin or you say you hate sin... But you still love the things in your life that trigger the temptation and the sin. So you hate doing that thing, right? And you hate how you feel after. But it's, it's not really that, that thing that you, the sin that you hate, that's the problem. The problem is that you love the trigger that gets you there. Uh, here's what I'm saying. Uh, let me just give you a couple of examples because then you're going to know what I'm saying. I'm saying, you, you hate the sin, but you, you love that person. Love them bad. Right, that's why you, right? You hate the sin, but you, you, love, you, you love that music too much. And then it's, it's after you listen to the music that you start to feel a little queasy. Right? You, lo you love money. There's nothing wrong with money, but you love it and it triggers you. Some of you love freedom. And for some reason, whenever the cat is away, you feel like it's time to play. I don't know. I was okay when the cat was here. But the cat is gone. You're not laughing because you are talking to. I'm going to say you love freedom. Right? You love those TV shows. You're wondering why. why you're watching foolishness and it triggers you. Some of you, the biggest trigger in your life is your phone. And to save your life, you are not putting your phone down. 
your phone is the biggest trigger and you have your finger on the trigger, you will not leave your phone at home. You are always ready. It can't even ring one time and you don't pick it up. It can't even buzz with a... You have your finger on the trigger. I mean, that thing triggers. That thing you spend so much time... The phone triggers so much sin in your life. You love the triggers. Take your finger off of the trigger. I'm just saying, your, your, your greed comes through that phone. Envy. Bad mind. These desires and you want to know how come. Well, it's because of all of the stuff. Some of you are just, just one phone call away from sinning. Just, just one ping away, just one ding. Oh, jeez. One phone call away. I, you're like, hey, you. <laughs> what? No, nothing, nothing, nothing. I'm not doing nothing. I'm, I'm just here. <laughs> Some of you are just one call away. You need to turn off your phone. Some of you are, as nine o'clock strike, you need to turn off your phone. <laughs> but you love those triggers. You hate the sin, but you love the triggers. So you're, you're going for God. You're saying you don't want to sin, but you're bringing the trigger with you. Can I list them again? I'm talking about people in your life that trigger you. Music, money, that stuff you drink triggers you, right? Freedom triggers your TV shows and then your phone. Those are things that are triggering you. I'm almost finished. Lastly, I need you to know today that there is an expiration date on the anointing. There's an expiration on the anointing. The anointing of God expires. I'm going to prove it. T turn with me, please, to 1 Samuel, verse 15. Watch this. The people begged God for a king. God was the king. He had prophets and judges and stuff that used to rule people. So, um, uh, but they begged God for a king. He says, okay, I'm going to find you a king. I'm going to give you a king like every other nation. Then he got this guy, Saul. He told the prophet, he said, uh, Samuel, go on and on. So, 1 Samuel 15, verse 1, then Samuel took the flask of oil, poured it all over Saul's head, kissed him and said, has not the Lord anointed you ruler over all of his inheritance? And I don't know why he asked him. Uh, but I think it's because it was obvious. Has not God now given you all of his power? Has not God given you, uh, put, uh, allowed made his Holy Spirit come upon you. Has not God made you a mighty warrior? You are anointed and he anointed him. You see, you have to understand that, that Saul became the most blessed man in the history of mankind in that moment. The first king of Israel. Uh, the first uh, man king of Israel. Right? And he, was, he was so blessed. You see, Saul was born for that. The Bible says he was tall, handsome, he had muscles, his shoulders were broad. The, the man, he just looked like a king. Looked like he should be ruling. He was, he was born to rule. He looked like a ruler. I, I, I can just imagine he had a very deep voice. I am Saul. Right? And he had a deep voice. Look like a, and he was a mighty warrior. And every fight him, fight him, win. And he, he was born for this stuff. It was his purpose. He was created on purpose to be a leader, to be a king. And not only did he have the purpose in him, not only was he created for it, but then God now comes and anoints his head, right, and pours his spirit out on him. And in addition to the potential in purpose, being created to do it, he's now given power and the presence of God. Isn't that amazing? I'm just telling you, there's something powerful when purpose meets power and the presence of God. Nothing can stop you. Except in, except in yourself, <laughs> right? So, so here, here, here's what happened. Uh, born for this, got the anointing, purpose, a power and the presence of God, wrapped up in Saul, and Saul is so strong. And Saul goes for God, and he fights battles, and he's going for God, uh, but then he stops to sin. And he picks himself up. Pulls back his shoulders and he goes for God again, but then he stops to sin. 
Then he goes for God again, wins a battle or two, then he stops to sin. Then he goes for God, then he stops to sin. He goes for God in the anointing and the power of God, but then he stops to sin. And he goes, then he stops to sin. And he goes, and he stops to sin. And he goes and he stops to sin. And he went and went and sinned and sinned until God said to him, enough is enough. Because of the going and the sinning, you're going to have to go by yourself. Because I don't go where there is sinning. <laughs> so you, you have so God says, I mean, I know, I, I, know, I know it was just a few years ago that I anointed you, that I allowed my spirit to come. I know, I know it was just a, I know you're created for this. But, but, but God is saying, I don't make for what you keep adding to it. In other words, I, I, know, the, I know the plans I have for you, Saul. But it appears that you, you have some plans for yourself. Different from my plans. So as I close, here's what happened to Saul. Right? So all we're going in with stuff. And God said, enough is enough. I'm not going with you. So the Bible says that uh, God said, you will no longer be king. I'm not, I'm not into you anymore. Read this with me. 1 Samuel 15 verse 26 now. He asked Samuel, can you come with me? And Samuel says, I'm not going to go back with you. You've rejected the word of the Lord. Meaning you keep doing what's wrong. Right? You've rejected the word of the Lord. And the Lord has rejected you as king over Israel. Now he... Just, just let me just say, I'm not saying he said, God now rejects you and you can't go to heaven and all of them kind of things. He just said, on this side of heaven, you will no longer be king. Yeah, he rejected him as king. He took the purpose and the presence away from him. Last verse. This is jumping down to chapter 16, verse 14. And it says this. It says, now the spirit of the Lord had departed from Saul. The anointing of God left Saul. It expired. Right? And an evil spirit, something else come on him. The anointing came off and then he was left with a spirit of torment. Here's what I'm saying today. The most tormenting spirit that a man can have, the most uh, tumultuous state that a man can be in, is a state where he has purpose but no anointing. Still born for this thing, but no anointing. Can I do it? I I'm saying, you have. You still have the purpose from God, but you turn around and you can't find the presence of God. I'm saying you still have the purpose of God, but you look around and you don't have any more power of God in your life. And you say, but, but I'm still perfect for this thing. I'm still tall. I'm still handsome. I still have muscles. I still have a deep voice. But no power. Torment. Filled his life. Purpose without presence. Purpose without power. He said, but the, the enemy is still there. The enemy is still taunting me. The enemy is still saying, where is Saul? Where is the big, bad, strong Saul? Where am they? He's still here. He just does not big and bad anymore. He does big. Right? And the needs of the people are still crying out. Where is Saul, the mighty king? Well, he's still there, but he's not who he was created to be. He is no longer, uh, because as he was going, he stopped over and over and over to sin and anointing the purpose, the, the, the power and the presence of God has an expiration. God is not going to go. Forever, if you keep stopping to sin. So today, God is just saying, enough is enough. I believe God is saying to many of us, 
that enough is enough. Go and sin, go and sin. Uh, enough is enough now. Can I prophesy? I'm so sorry I'm doing this. But I'm here to tell you, some of you today, enough is enough. Uh, you're going to have to choose whether you're going for God or you're going to go and stop and sin. You have to choose. Today's the day. God says, I have plans for you. What are your plans? I just want to encourage you today to go and sin no more. Hey, thank you so much for watching us here. Go for God Family Church on YouTube. Why don't you go ahead and hit that subscribe button to ensure that you get all of what is new from Go for God Family Church and to ensure that you don't miss anything.